President Buhari-led APC government is a citadel of corruption and the most corrupt administration in the history of our nation, says the PDP. And host communities and ministry at loggerheads over operating expenditure percentage in the PIB. Well, this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cohn. The PDP asserts that the Transparency Index uh, report, which shows Nigeria plunging to a pottery 149th on the Corruption Perception Index in 2020, is an incontrovertible confirmation that Nigeria is more corrupt under President Buhari and the APC than it was in 2015. Now, when they took office, uh, this is when they took office in 2015. Now, joining us to have this conversation this evening, all from Abuja, uh, PDP member Daini Ayodele and APC member Kairi Sani Arewa. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, thank you. Good evening, and uh, thank you for having me. All right, I, I'm gonna start yeah. with the, the APC member. Uh, the PDP, um, major, the major pull and drag on this particular issue is that the fact that Nigeria has dropped 13 places on the corruption index, making us 149th on the list of countries that are extremely corrupt. And this is because the president, um, the APC-led Buhari government, apparently campaigned on corruption as one of its biggest leaps to get into power. And, and, and that's why the PDP is saying, under your watch, we were hoping that the issue of corruption would have been dealt with. So what does the APC have to say about this? Hello? Can you hear me? Do you want me to take the question again? Yeah, we'll come back to the question. I can't hear you anyways. Well, I was saying that the PD, one of the reasons why the PDP is dragging the federal government right now is because one of the major campaign promises of the APC and Buhari-led administration was to fight corruption to a standstill. But as we see from 2015 till now, which is 2020, we have not necessarily gone up, but instead we have continued to deteriorate in terms of fighting corruption. Where does the APC stand on this? Okay, thank you. Hello? We can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Remember, when um, President Jonathan was, if I remember the level of Nigeria corruption then, I think uh, if I may say in Africa, we are the number one then. And we weren't. I still be. I'm sorry, we weren't. We, Nigeria was number one. Hello? We weren't. Get your facts right, sir. We, we were not number one in Africa. So can you tell me the number Nigeria were then? Well, you're the one who's defending the APC. So you tell us exactly where the APC stands on this. Yes, sir? You're the one who's defending the APC. So you should have your facts. But to me, you forgot that it was where the PDP, led by Donata, where they, where they, where they drove us where we are today. We are still suffering for what PDP did for good six years during the uh, Donata, how many years, and the General Muhammad Yaradua, Muhammad Yaradua, rather. Hello? Okay, well, I'll move to my to to the PDP um, representative. Now, the PDP government um, was termed to be really, really corrupt, according to uh, the APC respondent here, saying that the country was brought to its knees, and that is why the APC government, five plus years down the line, are still referring to a Jonathan administration uh, as corrupt, and that's the reason why we have found ourselves at number one forty nine. Uh, the PDP is saying that 
the APC has not been able to change, even if they were corrupt in 2015, we're in 2021 and we're still talking about that same corruption, maybe even at a worse level. Um, please help me respond to uh, the APC man who's saying that corruption was um, rife under Jonathan and that's why we're still here. Yeah, um, you know, the problem with uh, the APC is the fact that they came into power through propaganda. You know, it's a party built on propaganda. They've lied to Nigerians, they've told them different lies. And, uh, you know, when you, when you tell a lie, you, you would require another lie to cover up that lie. And so it will continue in that progression. And that is why we are where we are today. If you, if you remember vividly, in 2014, 2015, prior to the election that brought in General Mahmoud Buhari as the president of the country, APC, they will tell you they came... Uh, we're still talking about the APC versus the PDP. The PDP has put out a statement um, saying that the APC uh, and the Buhari-led administration has continuously gone down uh, on, the, in, uh, on the list of the most corrupt countries. Instead of stepping away from it, it looks more like that uh, Nigeria is continuously uh, increasing uh, its level of corruption. Now, we still have joining us two gentlemen live from Abuja, one an APC member and another uh, a PDP member. Now, Mr. Danny, before we went on that break, we were still talking about your reactions to what the APC member had said concerning the issue of corruption. And this is not the first time that the APC has continuously blamed the PDP uh, under Jonathan, President, former President Jonathan for the problems that they're facing or they've been facing since 2015 and now we're in 2021. Your reactions? Yes. Like uh, I was saying before the network uh, issue, just like the biblical Adam the first man created by God, when they had issue, when they had issues of uh, himself and um, Eve, and God called him and he said, where, is, where are you? Instead of him to say, this is where I am, the, the response was, the woman you gave me, blame me shifting blame to God. You see, the problem with this particular government is the lack, or and the, 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 the lack of will, and and their inability to accept responsibilities. They came into power, brought Nigerians heaven on earth, and on every promises they have made, they have failed, and it is not something that is eating. Nigerians can bear me witness. But can is the, the is, the, of is, is the PDP in 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 a position to uh, also blame the APC or rather uh, criticize the APC, being that the, the same PDP was chucked out of office by uh, you know the whirlwind called the APC because they were campaigning on the fact that the PDP was very corrupt and the people wanted the PDP out and that's why an APC was in power. But it looks more like a pot here calling a kettle black. Yes, that is the way it will look to some people. But the honest truth is that that was what Nigerians were made to believe at that time. They were made to believe that PDP was a corrupt party. And that is why if you look at PDP with the way we were coming through, since 1999. We have made a lot of progress before these people came on board. And they took us back to that Golgotha. And that is why we, are, we keep having issues. That is why we keep having problems. Because they will say one thing, and the, and the next thing, they are doing the other. Please, let me give you, let me, let me, let me give you instances. You get now. They appointed Magu as the chairman of EFCC. The, the the first corruption was the inability of General Buhari to replace Magu, even when the National Assembly rejected his nomination on several occasions, citing an indictment by the by the DSS, another organization under the presidency. That is, on its own, a high-level corruption. 
So let, let, let me let me quickly, let, day, let me quickly go to Kaya Day because we do not have time. Kaya Day, um, the PDP is claiming that the APC led administration has failed to go after leaders uh, and cronies, uh, their cronies, um, who allegedly were involved in um, stealing of over 9.6 trillion naira that was detailed in a leaked NNPC report. We all remember when that report was leaked. Um, also, over 3 trillion naira, they're also accusing them of 3 trillion naira, um, as well as money stolen from the FIRS, from the, NCD, the NDDC, um, NHIS, NEMA. I mean, the list is endless. And they're asking that these monies be refunded. They're asking that the, fe the federal government, led by President Buhari, follows through in collaboration with the EFCC to get those monies back. But they're saying that these monies will never come back because the APC is not necessarily fighting corruption. Do you see those monies coming back or these allegations even addressed in the first instance? Hello? Hello? Did you hear my question? Yes, let me... I'm going to ask you... Ask you. I'm going to answer your question by asking the Mr. PDP this question. Number one, what happened to 1.2 billion for the during the Jonathan Buhari campaign to DOPC? That's number one. Number two, what happened? To the money, um, the former PPP took person, uh, Ulisame Tu, what happened to the money? Let me answer the question before I proceed. Well, I asked you the question. I'm going to ask you again. These allegations, answer, just hold on, just hold on, just hold on. I will let you have the mic. These allegations for, I mean, the PDP, I'm, gonna, I'm not in any way standing in for them. He's going to speak for the PDP. But this, this is a government that said they were going to have zero tolerance for any form of corruption, whether it be systematic um, fraud, uh, systematic corruption, in, whether it be for leaders, ministers, whatever it is, financial or not. This is a government that actually did campaign on zero tolerance for corruption. So I think that it would be right for you to answer that question before you ask him your own question. Don't you think so? No, I wanted to answer the question before well, I'm I asking answer the question, your question here, so can you kindly answer my question before you become the moderator and ask him your question? I wanted to answer the question before the question. Well, let's move on. Let's move on. Mr. Danny. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. You see, um, when people lack facts, they, they continue to blab around. You see, I am going to address issues, and I, I am not interested in talking about whatever it is. The issue of uh, Olisame too is in court, and uh, an issue before a law court is not something that I should deliberate upon, whatever it is. But let, let, uh, same with that of the Fetsi that I mentioned. But they're waiting a little bit from there. Let me give you an instance. A government, we are all in, we are all in this Nigeria. When they are S1 chairman, Adam Sochomole said, the moment you join APC, your sins are forgiven. It happened in this country. What are those things? The moment a thief cross over to, PDP, uh, to APC, the, the story has changed. And I will give you instances. Look at what is happening presently. What, what happened? No, last year, in, uh, 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 during the um, House of Representatives um, probe into the NDDC issue. Yes. Yeah. Apabio was alleged. People who, are, who, who alleged him, they confronted him. That man, that guy, is still in office till this. That is a president that is saying that he's fighting corruption. How do you expect the, the Transparency International to, 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 to evaluate him? But in Aquabio's defense, the, the, there were also fingers that were pointed to members who were benefiting from the same thing that Aquabio was being accused of. You said what? In Aquabio's defense, he also did finger some members of the Senate or the National Assembly who were involved or benefiting what, 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 from what, that Whatever crime. it is, the ideal thing should have been that Aquabio should have been asked. 
to step aside while an investigation into the allegations is being activated. You don't leave such a man in that office. Have access to the files and documents. Why, 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 have you had any other thing about that case in, in the last few months? Unfortunately, no. So this is, this is, this is, this is their style. You understand? The moment they, they, they you know, you see, they, they are very, they are very clever in doing something. And, and I'm sorry <laughs> to, 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 to drift away a little bit from the topic. President Jonathan had, had, had almost finished the rail, the rail line between Abuja and Kaduna before Buhari came into power. Buhari came into power, and as a matter of fact, it was even commissioned before he left. A few months after Buhari came into office. They, they went back to commission the same rail, railway, claiming that they have, they have, they have, they've done railway within two months. So these are people that, when something is okay, they want to take the glory, even when it is very glaring that they were not the architect of such. But the moment they have problems, and that is why Buhari keeps blaming everybody but himself. Okay, let me he come has, back. Let me, he has blamed let... everybody who has been president since 1999. He has blamed President Obasanjo. He has blamed the late President Omaru Yaradua. He's still blaming President Jonathan. So for how long is he going to sit tight? He's been elected to be president to, 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 to clean the messes. All right, Not to let, continue let me, to shift blame. Let me go back to Kayode quickly. Um, Kayode, the ABC government has laid claims to the fact that they have technically won the war uh, over insurgency. Uh, but you know what has been dominating our headlines lately, which is the matter of insecurity. And like I always say, if you point on a map of Nigeria, wherever your finger faces, there is one form of insecurity or the other happening. And I'm talking about kidnapping, to cultism and clashes, um, uh, you know, ethnic crises or border, um, you know, problems. You have herders, you have cattle rustlers. I mean, name it. And of course, you still have Boko Haram, who still, you know, they might not have as many territories as they used to have, but they are still doing what they're doing in the northeast of the country. So can the APC really say that they have fought or won the war against terrorism and insecurity technically? Um, is Mr. Kayode still there? Can you hear me? Unfortunately, I think we have lost Kayode. So I'm going to come back to you, Dira. Um, I'm going to come back to you again. Um, let's talk about the um, fact that in 2019, um, a few, very few Nigerians were satisfied with the state of democracy in Nigeria. And this is about, this is a fact, fact. It was fact checked. Um, at least 39% of Nigerians were satisfied with the Buhari administration in 2019. Many Nigerians were skeptical about the country's political and judicial systems. Many Nigerians, at least 50 to 60% Nigerians, were divided on the lines of religion, ethnicity, and of course, political divides. And this is a fact that, you know, was brought to the, the, the attention of Nigerians. Um, what does this say about the APC administration? And don't forget, the APC still won the elections of 2019, which brought back President um, Buhari to office. Taking this assessment of the APC-led government, where do you stand? Sorry, is that question for me or Mr. Kaede? No, no, Kaede is off, so we're still continuing this conversation with you. Okay, so what was the question? I, I didn't hear the question very well. All right, I'll go back over it again. We were looking at a fact check from 2019, just before the elections, okay. which said that about 39% um, of Nigerians were not satisfied with the state of democracy in Nigeria. Many Nigerians were skeptical about the country's political and judicial systems. Uh, there was a wide gulf between Christian and Muslims. There was an ethnic bias that divided uh, many Nigerians, and of course, we were also divided along uh, political lines more than ever. What does this say about, and th let's not forget, the icing on the cake is that President Buhari still won the elections and came back into office. Uh, and that, that fact check makes it look more like there were still a few people who still liked President Buhari and still got him back into office, as opposed to how Nigerians felt about his leadership. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, the fact that President Buhari won the election in 2019 is a, is a story for another day. I don't want to go into that. May God forgive those people who, who participated in the conduct of that election. We have seen a, Sorry, a replica. Sorry, what do you mean by God, for, for God forgive the people who participated? Many Nigerians participated in that election. Yes. Who came out you see, you to see, vote and waited for the vote to be counted. Why I am trying to be civil is because I'm on air. And I am sure that a lot of Nigerians are listening to me. The honest truth is that the template for the conduct of the 2019 election was repeated in Kogi. And we all saw what happened. The election that brought President Buhari into office in 2019 was massively rigged. There, there is no way he can convince a reasonable Nigerian that he won that election. But like I said, it is not the issue for this court today. So that I don't want to drag you into that. But back to your question. You know that uh, President Buhari is somebody who is so nepotic. And this is very glaring, the appointments he has made since he has in power in 2015. You can do your statistics. It is very glaring that you have to belong to a particular section of the country. You have to practice a particular religion for you to get what. And it is just because to satisfy constitutional requirement. That is why they will feel a little to other sections of this country. All right, quickly, we're wrapping but up. You we're, know, we're out of time. We're out, out of time, Mr. Danny. Quickly, the PDP is asking the, the Buhari administration to commence the process of refunding 15 trillion naira stolen by APC leaders before 2023. Um, do you see this happening anytime soon? 2023 is about a, a now, year, a year plus. What? They're asking the president to fast track the return of 15 trillion naira that was stolen, allegedly, by APC leaders before the 2023 Please. elections. They're saying these monies have sister, to be returned to the government. Let us be honest with us. The same Buhari said Abacha never stole money. But today is the one collecting the loot Abacha loot. You understand what I'm saying? It's the same person. See, this is a man. Who would say something and he would do the opposite of it? Nigerians are wiser. And by now, we should stop. See, when Professor Wallace Yinka said he, he, for his own sanity state, he will, he, will, he will pretend that if this regime doesn't exist. That is the way every stable Nigerian should think at the moment. So in other words, you're saying that it's not possible, those monies will not be returned, yes or no? It will not. Even if they, even if they get those money back, it will end up in private pockets. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Daini Ayodele is a member of the People's Democratic Party joining us live from Abuja. Unfortunately, Kayade dropped off the call while the conversation was heated. Uh, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about the fist cuff that happened at the floor of the Senate yesterday as, of course, host communities insist nothing short of the 10% of operating expenditure they're demanding and they're asking that that's the only thing that will be acceptable instead of the proposed 2.5%, which is grossly inadequate to provide basic social amenities. We'll be right back to talk on it. Stay with us.